Chandler's Steakhouse in downtown Boise. If you haven't been to Chandler's, I definitely recommend it. Hired us to shoot a commercial for them and their takeout services. They're offering this butcher block. You go to Chandler's, you pick up your food, uh, you come home, you prep it, you have date night. It's nice. So we're just getting started. It's 9.30 in the morning here and uh, we're on a bit of a time crunch. I've got Brett on the gimbal and the GH5. This is the making of the Chandler Steakhouse commercial. Follow me. So first things first, we gotta get the models into the kitchen. So the first couple shots are just the establishing shots, what are called establishing shots. You're just establishing the scene. Uh, wife is coming home to husband. They're gonna cook together. So those are the shots we gotta do. And in the meantime, we have a food stylist here. We obviously have a head chef here. Um, they're gonna be prepping the food, making it really good. And the biggest thing is make sure you get coffeeed up before these shoes. Rex is just dumping espresso into this cup, which is, <laughs> that'll, that'll do it. <laughs> A minute. We gotta make up for lost time. And we don't know when the next snags are gonna come, so we just gotta we gotta keep moving. I think this still looks keep okay. Moving. The other one I Okay, one more time, the fridge door bounced back. So let's yeah, hold it a little bit. finally gotten to the uh, actual dinner part of this shoot and in typical just every commercial shoot uh, we kind of went off the rails had to go off script a little bit so we got to figure out how to get this shoot wrapped up in 45 minutes and uh, get our models out of here and I've got about a third of the shot <laughs> left so let's hurry this up So that's a wrap and uh, I feel pretty good about it. There's a couple of things that I definitely am thinking about in post. So that's a wrap. let's go edit this thing and uh, let's take a look at this video. covered this thing from start to finish which is good when you're doing a client shoot 
you want to make sure you get everything in case the client comes back and is like, do you have salads going into the refrigerator? Do you have boxes being pulled out of a bag? We might not use that shot, but we want to make sure we have from start to finish this whole date night covered. And we covered it well. But really the goal here is to tell a story in 60 seconds of this couple going to Chandler's, getting the food, coming home, cooking it, eating it, having a beautiful time, having date night. And to do that, we have to kill some of our babies. I don't know if that's something I heard in school or something another filmmaker told me or maybe I heard on the internet or maybe it's just my own sick twisted mind coming up with a term for this, but when I say kill your babies, you know, it took a lot for us to get these shots. We planned them out. We like most of them. There are babies. And unfortunately, when you get to the cutting room, cut is an aggressive word for a reason. You gotta cut these, these clips that you like. You gotta kill your babies for the good of the story. So this is the bag shot. This is the establishing shot of her coming in. We actually did this shot multiple times and uh, the one that we ended up using was the first one. So I probably could have saved some time okay. there. This shot with the dogs took us forever to get dogs and we had doorbells ringing and stuff. But this is the first baby we got to cut. She comes in, he's serving one. Stuff being pulled out of the bag isn't a necessarily appealing shot. I think it's still integral to the story because because we are selling this. We're selling the takeout. So this gives some good information to the viewer. We got our salad shot. That probably won't make it. This is the first shot I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of right here. So besides killing babies, we're also going to do what I call the postmortem. All my terms for it are super negative. It's like, kill your babies, the postmortem. But anyways, this shot. It was early on, everyone was still kind of getting in their groove, trying to get comfortable. It was the first one we lit, and I think we lit it a little too harshly. We had to try to balance out this blown out window behind them and get some light on their face, but I really should have had a bigger soft box of some kind, or at least instead of pointing the light directly at them, pointing it up at the ceiling and letting it bounce off the white ceiling and back down. It's a little harsh, but that one will probably make it. Grills and stuff being turned on, there's just too much of that. Stuff going in the oven, too much of that. The first food shot we actually set up and get to is the steak. We kind of nailed it, but then we noticed that, you know, this steak is a little fatty, which that's good. You want a steak that's fatty. That's what's going to get it to taste well. But maybe visually it's not the best thing to have this big hunk of fat facing the camera. So we actually moved on to some other shots and then came back and redid this. Rex, the chef there, gave some advice to our model to lift his fingers higher to sprinkle the salt. Because as you'll notice in this first scene, the first time we did it, I really like where his fingers are and we told him to keep his fingers there, but the salt kind of clumps up on the steak. So Rex told him to lift his fingers higher but unfortunately, because of that, his fingers leave the frame. You see that? And, and that makes it hard to tell like that the salt falling is in slow motion. I really like the way of the fingers, when fingers go like this, I kind of wanted that. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this shot that's overhead, unfortunately. I love it, but we're gonna have to kill that baby. And in order to help the audience see that the salt is in slow motion and to just give it a little more pop, I'm gonna do a little bit of speed ramp on it. So I'm gonna start it in slow motion and then kind of give his fingers when they finally come into the frame a little bit of a floral or a furl, or I don't even know how that word works. Floral, furl, furl, flutter, filet. And here's a trick I like to do, it's something that you're not supposed to do, but I like to do jump, what are called jump cuts. That's a jump, now we're jumping there. Because again, we're trying to drive this story. The whole process of lifting a grill, taking the meat carefully with your tongs, putting it on the grill, it's actually quite a long process, you know. We're looking at 20, 25 seconds there. We gotta make it quicker. And the real effective way to jump cut is to jump cut on part of the beat. On a drum.
drum beat on some sort of high note. Dun, 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 dun. And there you're cutting, you know, on the dun. kind of gets in the way here. So we'll use a jump cut to get his arm out of there. And then I kind of like putting a little bit of a slow-mo twist on this again, a little bit of a speed ramp as you see the uh, the tongs kind of going by. We tried forever to get this steam shot. I mean, obviously you want to get it right when it comes out of the oven, but if you miss that, which is normal, you rarely get it on the first take. You shoot it, it plays out, and you're like, oh, okay, we need to make a couple of tweaks. So with the steam shot, we missed that first one. We just didn't really get a good steam shot. Now we're in kind of a predicament because the fish has been cooked, so we can't put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes. So Rebecca, our food stylist, was microwaving a paper, a soaked paper towel. She would hurry up and toss it in there and then we'd hurry up and shut the aluminum foil. This took us a little while, but we finally got the steam. So at this point when we moved to the table, we have about 35 minutes left. So I'm just gonna cut that first wine pour out. I'm gonna go right to them eating, eating dinner. This shot with the dog was cute. And we got a wine shot. Oh of them clinking glasses. So we do have wine in there. I really decided to focus on the cheesecake at the end. Again, we were running out of time. Always focus on the female model and whatever she's eating if you have to juggle between her and him. The two final things we have to do are color grade this and put sound effects over it. The color grade is pretty, pretty straightforward. I do have kind of a bluish theme and a bluish tint to this whole video. You know, it's winter time. It's a little more Christmas vibe. I really wanted to capture and use as much audio as I, I could from the actual camera. But when you're on set and there's eight people there and things are going on, you know, we just couldn't, we just couldn't get what we wanted to audio wise. So for that, I went back and, um, I use Epidemic Sound where I get some of my music and my sound effects from. And they didn't have salt hitting steak, but they had rock salt hitting wood. So when you get this steak being covered in salt shot, that's what you're hearing. You're hearing rock salt being poured on wood. And I changed the sound of it as well. So not only do you get the speed ramp visually, you get the speed ramp audibly. The steak coming off the grill, that's all natural. So it's really just this blend, you know, of natural and not natural sound. The aluminum foil sound, it didn't really work. So I added the aluminum foil sound. This is a poor water sound effect that I added onto the fish. Uh, I added cutting into an apple. Glasses clinking there. I wanted the cheesecake to sound like something when she's cutting into it. And the look of satisfaction on our model's face, I think is a great way to close. So there we have it. There we have our 60 second commercial. Let's take a look and see how this looks. There's our 60 second food commercial that we shot in three hours for Chandler's Steakhouse. Chandler's Steakhouse did hire us to shoot the food commercial, but they did not 
sponsor this YouTube video. I've just always wanted to work for Chandler's and I thought it'd be really cool to make this behind the scenes video to it. I thought this would be a great idea as well for everyone out there, you know, dealing in these uncertain times. It's the holiday season and it's just a really fun idea. It's a cool concept. It supports local businesses and local restaurants. And I just, I'm so psyched that we were able to do this commercial with them. Support your local eateries, support your local restaurants. Stay safe. Uh, we'll be back next week with the traditional adventures. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.